This is how the web API returns data after being hosted on Azure. Notice the azurewebsites.net domain, which indicates that this is a live web API responding to requests in real time. In this lesson, we will explore how to use the web app dashboard on the Azure portal to manage and configure the API. We will learn how to tweak the web URL where the API is hosted, monitor its status, and adjust various other settings. Additionally, we will cover how to set up continuous integration and continuous deployment by connecting our web application with GitHub using GitHub Actions. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a solid understanding of how to deploy, monitor, and maintain a web API on Azure effectively, and also learn how to use GitHub Desktop for source control along the way. We would need an account on github.com, GitHub Desktop, Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition, a free ID from Microsoft, and an account on azure.com. We'll be using the sample API controller code provided by Visual Studio when creating an ASP.NET Core Web API. To have this functionality, if you have already installed Visual Studio, we can go to Visual Studio Installer. Click Modify. Select ASP.NET and Web Development. Select .NET Desktop Development and Data Storage and Processing. Uh, if your installer shows you the space required for installing this, then click Install to add these capabilities to your Visual Studio IDE. Let's head over to GitHub Desktop and create a new repository by clicking File, New Repository. Give a name to the GitHub repository folder. Choose a local path. Choose Visual Studio for the Git Ignore section. Click Create Repository. Next, hit Publish Repository. We can choose to keep the code public or private. Click the Publish Repository button. This adds a .gitignore file that prevents temporary files created by Visual Studio from being committed to the GitHub repository. Let's head over to Azure and sign up. Azure offers a 30-day, $200 credit for eligible users, giving you access to a wide range of cloud services to experiment with and build projects. If this offer isn't available in your region, you can still opt for the pay-as-you-go subscription, which has no upfront costs. Azure's always free tier also includes generous limits, perfect for learning, testing, and hosting small projects without worrying about charges. Azure is an excellent platform for students looking to gain real-world cloud experience. This is the dashboard. Click the Create Resource button. Go to Web App and click Create. Choose the subscription. I only have one subscription, so I'll select that. Next is the Resource Group, which acts as a container for all your related resources. Create a new resource group, give it a name, and click OK. Now in the Instance Details section, provide a name in the Name field. This will be your Web API URL. If you check the checkbox below, it will add a unique identifier to the URL, making it unique. However, I prefer to uncheck it and create a unique URL myself so that it is easier to remember. In my case, the web URL would be learnbackendapi.azurewebsites.net. I'm publishing via code. The runtime stack is .NET 9. The operating system is Windows. For the region, choose the one closest to you, as this will impact how fast your web API responds. For me, it's Central US. If you live in Central US and don't see it in the dropdown, the next closest option would be East US 1. By default, Azure selects the standard S1 pricing plan change it to the free plan instead. The free plan offers 60 CPU minutes per day, meaning that if the API is responding to requests continuously, this plan can only support about one hour of uptime per day. However, if it's not handling requests continuously, which is typical for any beginner project, it can stay up for the whole day without issues. Click Next. Click Next again. This is the page where we set up CICD, Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment, via GitHub Actions. Choose Enable. Select your GitHub account and authorize it by entering your credentials. Click Authorize Azure App Service. For personal accounts, the organization will be the same as your GitHub account. Choose the repository we created earlier. The branch is the main branch. Basic authentication is disabled. Click Next. Enable public access is on by default. Leave it on. Click Next. 
Enable Application Insights is on by default. Leave it on. Click Next. Click Next again. The last step is Review. Go over the settings for your web app. Click Create. At the top, you'll see the deployment status, initializing deployment and submitting deployment. Once it completes, you'll see your deployment is complete. On the right, click Go to Resource. You'll be taken to your web app dashboard. Notice the URL where your web app is hosted. As we scroll down, we can see that the CI CD deployment has begun with whatever we had committed to our GitHub repository so far. Click on the web app URL. You'll see your web app is running and waiting for your content until the build and deploy process in GitHub Actions is completed. To view the progress of the build and deploy process, go to the Actions tab. The latest commit in the repository is being deployed. This deployment attempt has resulted in a failure. When we check GitHub Desktop, we notice that we did not add that commit message. It was added by Azure because we granted it access to our repository. To fetch the latest updates from github.com, click Fetch Origin, which downloads any updates that our local repository does not yet have. Then click Pull Origin. Notice that Azure has added a commit containing a .yml document. This yaml.yml document contains instructions for the web app server on how to build and deploy the AS.NET Core app, including the build location and the publish location. The YAML document also includes the credentials needed to access the Azure hosting environment of our web app, such as the client ID, tenant ID, and subscription ID. These credentials are stored as environment variables, which means the web app can access them safely. This prevents the need to hard code credentials and push them to GitHub, which is strongly discouraged for security reasons. Every commit to the connected repository automatically triggers a build and deployment using the commit message. This was added by Azure as part of the initial deployment when the web app was created. The deployment consists of two steps, build and deploy. Click Build to view detailed logs of the build process. An error has occurred during the .NET build step. This error indicates that no .NET project was found in the working directory. By default, the working directory is the root of the GitHub repository, and the build step expects a .csproj file at this location. If the .csproj file is located in a subfolder within the root repository, we need to specify its path in the .yml file. The same applies to the publish folder. We had only created the repository, but hadn't added any ASP.NET Core code. Let's add it now. Open Visual Studio and click File, New Project. Choose the ASP.NET Core Web API template and click Next. Give the project a name and specify the local path to save it. Choose the GitHub repository path we created earlier. The Place Solution and Project in the Same Directory checkbox adds an additional subfolder. I prefer not to have that Select .NET None as the framework, and make sure to check the Use Controllers checkbox. Then, click Create. After the project is created, we land on the Overview page. Verify the added files. Notice that the Controllers folder contains a Weather Forecast Controller.cease file. The convention is to use the name of the controller before the controller keyword. This name will act as a page in the URL of our API. The weather forecast controller contains an HTTP GET method named GET. Click the green button to run the project locally. A console window opens, displaying the local URL and port where the web API is listening. When navigating to the base URL, we get a 404 not found error. This is expected since no controller exists at the base location. However, if we navigate to the sub-URL corresponding to the controller name, weather forecast, we receive a response. Let's keep this functionality intact. I want to host this API and see it live before adding any additional code. Since we added the project to our GitHub repository location, GitHub Desktop detects new files. Click Commit to Main, then click Push Origin. Navigate to the GitHub Actions tab on GitHub. A deployment has already started with the commit message. Open the build logs to inspect details of the build failure. The error is the same as before. The build step cannot find the .csproj file in the repository root folder. Open the .yml file. 
located in the .github slash workflows subfolder. Examine the repository structure to locate the .csproj file. The file is inside a subfolder named Backend API Project. Copy the subfolder name and paste it after the build command and the publish command in the .yml file enclosed in double quotes. Save the changes to the .yml file, write a commit message, and click commit to main. Then click push origin. Since we just committed the changes, the build and deployment should restart automatically. Go to the GitHub Actions tab. Our recent commit is now building. The build step, which was previously failing, now completes successfully since it finds the .csproj file in the specified subfolder. Wait for the build to complete. The deploy step starts next. Once completed, the deployment is successful. Open the Azure portal and click the web app resource to navigate to the web app dashboard. The deployment status confirms a successful deployment with a timestamp. Click the URL of the hosted web API. Again, we get a 404 not found error at the base location. This is expected. Navigate to Weather Forecast where the controller is located and the API returns data from the live hosted URL. This concludes the tutorial. We have successfully deployed our ASP.NET Core Web API and made it live. In the next video, we'll connect our Blazor front-end website with our ASP.NET API. We'll request data from the Web API and display it on our front-end page. Later, we'll learn how to integrate a SQL database starting locally, then moving to the cloud using Azure and Supabase.com. By the end, we'll have a complete setup, a front-end client, a back-end API, and a database to retrieve and store data. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider subscribing. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.